I'm Dr. Cody Rawl, a U.S. Navy trained physician, and I've been using Neurotech wearables to improve my own brain health, as well as the brain health of my clients for the past 10 years. For the past six months, I've been experimenting with the Neurovisor light and sound device to see if it can improve my brain health metrics, as well as the depth of my meditation sessions, which is the subject of today's video. I've got some really interesting brain data to show you. The Neurovisor has nine LED lights that create all kinds of psychedelic patterns and encourage different brainwave states by flickering lights through your closed eyes depending on which setting you pick on the app. One day I just decided to try to use one of my favorite settings called Upbeat on a Muse meditation session and I was really surprised that it actually doubled my Muse Calm score. I did a meditation before the light stimulation and got a Calm score of 37% and then did a session while I was getting stimulated by Neurovisor which increased my Calm score to 62% and then I repeated this several times with similar results. I was actually really surprised about these improved meditation scores because I know that light has something called alpha blocking, which causes levels of the alpha frequency brainwaves to go down when a person is exposed to light. And because the meditation algorithms are often rewarding increased alpha, this was the opposite result of what I expected. So in order to figure out what was going on, I took some raw brainwave data recordings of myself with no light stimulation, continuous light stimulation, and then neurovirus stroboscopic light stimulation and dove into the raw brainwave data to figure out what was going on. You can see how that blue line has an increase until there's a big dip at the two minute 45 second mark. That's where I turned on the Neurovisor device and you can see the alpha blocking happening. Because of the light stimulation, the alpha waves in my brain are going down in relative voltage and power. The effects are the largest in the back of your brain where the visual information is processed in an area called your occipital lobe. So I isolated the data from the ear sensors, which is closest to the occipital lobe, to demonstrate the largest changes. Alpha brainwaves tend to be the highest when your eyes are closed and in the dark. Any exposure to light by opening your eyes or shining light through your closed eyelids will create a sharp decrease in the alpha power. Now, normally the Muse Meditation app favors higher levels of alpha, so I thought the positive feedback from the Muse headband would go way down when I was getting stimulated by the Neurovisor light, but the opposite was true. I also tried meditating with continuous light shown through my closed eyes to see if there was any change there, but I didn't notice much difference between meditating in the dark and meditating with a light on. So my question is, what is it about Neurovisor that makes it better at improving my Muse meditation score compared to continuous light? Let's go back to the brainwave recordings. If you look at the graph for the exposure to constant light, you do see the dip in power of the alpha frequency band followed by a gradual rise. I dug a little deeper to figure out what that gradual rise was and I learned during the filming of this video that with normal light exposure there's a term called neural adaption where the brain has that initial response and drop in alpha but then compensates and increases alpha in an attempt to restore alpha homeostasis. Now looking at these graphs if you compare the neurovisor alpha drop to the continuous light alpha drop there are several key differences. First of all, the drop by Neurovisor is over twice as large as the continuous light one is. Second of all, I noticed that the alpha rebound effect was much more gradual with Neurovisor compared to continuous light. With Neurovisor, it took about three minutes to get the alpha levels back up, whereas with the continuous light, it only took two minutes. I'm thinking this has to do something with the fact that the light is flickering instead of continuous, so the flickering light continues to introduce novelty throughout the session. I also noticed that the restored alpha level of Neurovisor was about 10% lower than the restored alpha level of the continuous light after my brain attempted to reach alpha homeostasis while the light was still on. There's some other things going on in these graphs as well. Compared to meditation without any light, there is a general increase in beta, gamma, and theta in power when you're exposed to continuous light or the neurovisor. But if you look at theta for neurovisor, it tended to be about five to 10% lower than the continuous light. And I know from experience that theta is used as an indicator for drowsiness and can create negative feedback on the Muse device because it thinks you're falling asleep. So a lower theta level with the Neurovisor may be contributing to the better Muse score as well. 
I'm not sure what exactly all these variations mean as far as meditation goes, but they do seem to be working well for the Muse algorithm. Subjectively, I can tell you that I'm a lot more relaxed during the NeuroVisor stimulation, so the positive feedback from the Muse algorithm does seem to be matching up with my experience. This worked best when I would turn on the NeuroVisor so it was already flashing light, and then I started the Muse calibration and went into the Muse meditation, making sure that it calibrated with the flashing light. And then during the meditation, I get all that positive feedback of hearing birds tweeting and low wind and waves. Whereas if I was having a bad meditation session, I would have gotten a lot more of the negative feedback, which is a bunch of wind and rain. And you can see it reflected in the end scores as well. I did do a meditation session after the NeuroVisor stimulation and saw that there was an improvement between before when I did meditation earlier in the day and was distracted, then did the NeuroVisor, which doubled the meditation score, and then did another meditation, which had a lower final result, but still was improved over the first meditation. We know that the Muse neurofeedback algorithms were designed around the brains of expert meditators, so there's something in the stimulation effect of NeuroVisor that's matching those brainwave patterns as biomarkers. It could be the larger changes in alpha, the more gradual rebound of alpha, lower levels of theta, and other slight influences from beta and gamma that the Muse headband is responding to favorably from the NeuroVisor stimulation. It must be getting pretty close to that ideal state of meditation to get those high Muse scores. There could be multiple biological explanations for this. The NeuroVisor photic driving could be inducing some sort of brainwave entrainment towards frequency bands that are favorable. The light stimulation could be creating more variability in my EEG patterns that reflects a highly engaged brain. And it also could be activating the rest and relax parasympathetic nervous system, which has positive relaxation effects on the body and mind and is reflected positively in the brainwaves. One of my initial theories was that NeuroVisor would improve a new metric of brain health that Muse has called peak alpha, which is the peak amplitude of the alpha frequency band. It's a new biometric offered by Muse that reflects overall brain health and longevity. But I was surprised to find that there was no changes in the peak alpha during the NeuroVisor stimulation on several testing runs. So if I had a suggestion for NeuroVisor, it would be to try and find a stimulation frequency that reliably increased peak alpha. But likely it would be hard without any measurements, so a feedback loop is needed like you find with Sensei or like I'm doing with the combination of Muse and NeuroVisor. I'll definitely be testing the Sensei Alpha Boost through photobiomodulation and binaural beats this next month, so be sure to subscribe to see that one. I will say that in my past experiments, I was able to show that NeuroVisor increased the randomness of my brainwaves in a measure called brainwave variability, which is also seen in psychedelic treatments. So there's definitely some brain health improvement metrics there. Overall, the more that I look into NeuroVisor, I realize that it's not just a fun light show, but it actually enhances my meditation sessions and pushes my brain deeper into meditative states despite the alpha blocking effects of the light. I think it has to do with the way that it blocks alpha and has a slow rebound effect, as well as the effects on theta and gamma that align it well with the Muse meditation algorithm. Now, if you have both devices at home, my advice is to make sure that you are doing the Muse calibration while the NeuroVisor lights are already flashing. That way you're gonna get the best effects for the meditation. And it was good to see that the effects lingered for at least an hour afterwards, which were reflected in my meditation scores after the stimulation period. Basically, my Muse Calm scores went from 35% before stimulation, 65% during stimulation, and then back down to 55% after stimulation. So that does give us some evidence that these effects are lingering throughout the day and will help your brain stay cool and calm as you go throughout your daily tasks. Overall, I found the combination of NeuroVisor and Muse to be really fun. I've got a bunch more to investigate. I think these feedback loops are really what we need to improve the biohacking capability of these brain devices. I'd love to hear more from you out there. Have you tried this combination? Do you have other feedback loops that you've been using? Be sure to leave a comment below and I will 100% respond if it's within the first week of this video posting. Now, if you want to see a deep dive and a review on NeuroVisor or the Peak Alpha Muse measurements, click one of these videos here and I'll see you on the other side.